Welcome to the dissecting of a bottle lock. You have seen how the lock works and you have seen how easy it was to take it apart. In this video I want to put it back together and learn how it works. Yeah, here you see all the parts this lock is made of. Let's start with reassembling by making the door working again. So that's the door on the right side and that's the housing. And these two pieces come together like this. So we have to insert this rod here in the hole and in this gap here comes this little spring to make the door swing open automatically. Okay, almost done. Sticks out a little bit. Uh, we have to align the door correctly to push it in all the way. So now you can see the door is springy and swings open automatically. Let's assemble the locking part on the door. So in the door we have to insert this part here. From the cutout we can see how it goes in. And there's a counterpart, that's this push button here, that goes in the body. But before we have to insert a little spring in here. Okay. So I will now temporarily insert the button to so show you that the locking mechanism for the door works. Here the door closes and stays closed and when I push the button the door opens. I have to remove this again because we have to work a little bit more on the <laughs> internals here. So first comes this springy plate that lets the outer wheels click when you turn them. So these three prongs here push against the outer wheels and when you turn the wheels um, you get these clicks and they stay at every whole number. Alright, I think now it's time to work on the wheels. We have this rod here where everything gets pushed onto. First comes this here, that's for changing the code. When this gets pushed inwards to the right, then the inner and outer wheels get disengaged and you can change the code. So now, outer wheel, inner wheel, outer wheel, inner wheel, outer wheel and inner wheel. Then we have the spring that comes last. Now we can almost reassemble everything. So 
So here at the end it becomes a little tricky because we have to add this washer here to protect the plastic piece. So let's see if we can do that without having all the parts jumping everywhere. Okay, it worked out nicely. Yeah, the change part here, the change key here, this, this thing here, needs to be pushed up so that this is not under spring tension. And you might have seen this little spring here flew out, so we have to reinsert it. All right. So now what comes next is this bar here that interacts with the inner wheels. It goes in like so. And when all the inner wheels are aligned correctly with their cutouts, this piece here, this bar here, can retract. Otherwise, it's pushed outwards. So let's see. That's how the inner wheel looks like. And here we can see the cutout must be aligned like this. And the last one. can see now it's retracted and when I change the position of a wheel oops change the position of a wheel it comes out okay now comes the last part which is the button but there is more to the button than just the button there is another spring and this little piece here This needs to be assembled. The spring goes onto this little rod here, and this will be put together. Yeah, let's spring load it. And depending on the position of this inner part, the button can be pushed down or not. So this little piece here needs something to point. This little piece here is important. If it's in, the button cannot be pushed down. If it's out, it can, because it will collide with this plastic piece here if it's pushed inwards. Otherwise, it's positioned between the two plastic pieces and then the button can be pushed down. So, let's insert the push button. Currently, the lock is in the unlocked state. So, when I close the door, I should be able to push down the button and the door should open. Or maybe not. Yeah, the door opens. Okay, I held, I held it with my finger. So, and it opens. If it's not completely reassembled, it's hard to operate. <laughs> so now when I change the position of a wheel, the bar comes out and pushes inwards this springy element on the button and now um, the button's movement is blocked, so it will not work, cannot be pushed down. Okay, now let's enter the right code again. Okay, now it's retracted again, the door should open. All right, I quickly show you the change option here, but I cannot demonstrate this because otherwise all the parts will <laughs> fly around. Um, you can see this end piece here. I showed it to you when I reassembled everything. Um, it can be pushed to the left now, and then it pushes the inner wheels also to the left, but the outer wheels will stay in place, so they disengage. Then you can change the outer wheels position and exchange the code therewith. Um, you can 
manipulate this piece here from the um, from the button here and it goes to the left and downwards and then it's yeah held in place and you can change the code. Now the button fell out. I have to reassemble that. Okay, now it works. Close it and we have the code 248. What remains to do is to put the cap back on and now everything should work as expected. We can even change the code now. code. Door still opens. Now I can engage again inner and outer wheels. And we have installed a new code. Okay. What remains to do is to insert the screws and we are done. Yeah. This log was sent to me by VDE, by the way, so Victor, thank you very much for this interesting log. It was a lot of fun to inspect the internals. Yeah, and if you're interested in a decoding of this log, I will link my video where I got this log first time and where I decoded it with a decoding knife. All right. So, Victor, thanks again for the nice luck and everybody else. Thank you very much for watching. Happy picking and bye-bye.